Alléluia. I would like to start from Isaiah 26 verse 3. Isaiah 26 verse number 3. It said, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. Now that means there is a place for perfect peace. In the midst of that which seems to be chaos all over the place, troubles all over the place, confusion all over the place, even in the world, even in your families, around the country, wherever. We can always experience, we always can see all of these confusions that are going on. But in the midst of all of that, there is a place for perfect peace. And I want to encourage somebody this morning that even that trouble you think you are in, you can still have peace in the midst of that trouble. God has a way of unveiling this perfect peace to us even though it seems, seems to be very contrary to our expectations. But the Bible is saying you've got to keep your mind on him and then you've got to trust him. There are two conditions he gave there by which you can receive the peace that God is talking about. Your mind being stained on the Lord and you trusting on him. The mind actually speaks of your purpose. It speaks of your conception, your perception, your imagination, your works. That is to say, it speaks of your thoughts, your mind. The Bible is saying, you will keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind? I mean, there are some people whose mind can be stable and steady on the Lord. And the Bible is saying, where your mind is on him, he guarantees you perfect peace. Two things, you got to have your mind on him and you got to trust him. So there is no condition that you are in today that is beyond the peace of God. There is no situation you find yourself today that is beyond the peace of God. And what enables you to attract this peace we are talking about is that your mind will stay on the Lord. Hallelujah. Only Jesus can create perfect peace for us. Within our minds, those storms of trials may range without us. In other words, outside of us, there are all manner of confusion. And sometimes even within us, in our soul realm, our thoughts, our confusions, we have all manner of things that are troubling us. Paul will say there is this war within and without. There is this oppression within and without. But in the midst of all that, God can see guarantee us perfect peace. And that is only when our heart, our mind, and our trust is on the Lord. By implication, you can have perfect peace outside of God. You may have peace, but it can be perfect peace. Now, if you look at the word perfect peace, actually in the Hebrew, it means shalom, shalom. That is peace, peace. That's what he's talking about. And when we talk about this peace, we're talking about the peace that is all whole. Wholesome peace, spirit, soul, and body. In every area, God intended to have perfect peace. Praise the living God. Let me give you a simple illustration. Mark chapter 4, we read from 35. Mark chapter 4 from verse 35. The Bible says, On the same day when the evening was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. Now look at 37. And there are a great storm of wind. And the waves went into the ship so that it was now full. You know, the water was entering the ship. And he was in the hinder part, or the front part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said unto him, Master, 
carries out not that will perish. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Well, he said that, and that is true. But I don't think anybody in this hall today will experience this kind of a thing and will not be afraid. You are in a boat. And the boat is now, water is now coming into the boat. It's like he's saying, it's getting filled with problem. It's like your life is filled with problem. But one thing you want to realize is this. There is Jesus with you in the midst of the storm. Hallelujah. Don't forget, he is even the one, sometimes when I read this passage, something shocked my mind. He is the one that asked them to say, let's cross over. And that knows even that what God come to pass. He is aware that even at the end of the day, God is definitely going to come. But he asked them to cross. He never forsook them in the first place. He is with them. But there is something he has that the disciples didn't have. And that's the calmness of mind. In the midst of the trouble, he could still be sleeping. Oh, think about that. How many of you can still rest when trouble is on the way? How many of you can still have peace when your house is on fire? Now think about it. Sometimes even ordinarily, watch this. People have told us sometimes when there's fire explosion in your home, don't panic. Have you had such a thing? They begin to tell you what to do. And the truth is, if you don't have a stable mind, you cannot be able to handle the fire. If you are friendful, you can't be able to handle the fire. That simply means if there is trouble in your life and you are not stable in your heart, you can't handle it. By implication, the only way you handle any trouble in your heart is a stable mind. Praise the living God. And here is the storm. Here is the wind. Here is the wave. Everything was beating on these people. But the funny thing is this. He's the one that asked them to enter into the boat. He's the one that asked them to cross. But like I'm trying to say, how come he could still be sleeping? How come in the midst of this trouble, he could still be sleeping? That means there's a place for sonship in God. Where that absolute peace is guaranteed. There's a place in God, as a son of God, where you have the double assurance that no matter the storm, no matter the wave, your father is with you. Your God is with you. Jesus is in your boat. Amen. Praise the living God. And so because it's in your boat, there is no amount of storm that is going to drain you. Because Jesus is in your boat, there's no amount of wave that is going to sink you. I am saying this morning, your boat is not going to sink. Your boat is not going to sink. Because Jesus is with you on the boat. Hallelujah. It's a perfect peace of this whose heart is stayed on thee. Now the peace which he pronounced in the book of Mark is different from what is given to us in Isaiah 26. This piece is trying to say, shut up. And then there is calmness. This is not the peace is given to you. But this is the peace that is rebuking every form of enemy that was supposed to be troubling your own peace. And he says, shut up. And then there was calmness. When he said, peace be still, what he means to say, you wave, shut up. And then the wave have to keep quiet. So when the Lord make a pronouncement, there's going to be calmness in your life. Hallelujah. It properly means be mute. Muteness. Involutely stillness. Inability to speak. So there is a point at which the Lord makes pronouncement, I repeat, over some stormy life. There's going to be this calmness. Around that, those never speak anymore against you, about you, towards you. They will come you towards you confused they have to be still and quiet peace be still what it means to say stop talking in other words stop agitating my sons stop agitating my disciples stop in, by enemies you think you integrated from this hour I'm asking you to stop and so shall it be with you in the name of Jesus Christ John 14 Verse 27. John 14, verse 27. Jesus said, Peace I live with you, or I live with you. My peace I give unto you. I want you to know the word, my peace. Not as the world gave it. Give her unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. 
I just want you to look at that word alone. Peace I leave unto you. And he said, my own peace. Now, it is his peace that made him to sleep when there was storm. I'm not forgetting that. Storm was there, he was sleeping. He has a kind of peace in his heart that he don't have. Now he's saying to his disciples, the kind of peace I had when the storm was on, I'm leaving that with you. Praise the living God. So you see, a time is coming in your life where the troubles that are around you, you won't recognize them. They are there, but you have peace that no man can guarantee. He said, the peace I'm going to give to you is not the type that the world gives. That means the peace of the world can vanish when trouble comes. The peace of the world can disappear when problem comes. But my own kind of peace is a type that troubles doesn't disturb. And that is what I'm leaving behind for you. In other words, you'll come to a place in your life when truly you will say it is well. Even in the midst of the storm, there is something that tells you that there is solution. There's something that tells you that you are going to cross over. There's something that tells you that your boat is not going to sink. The voice is there telling you, why are you troubled? Fear not. He is with you even in the midst of the storm. Don't forget what he said. I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. Lo, I am with you always to the end of the age. No matter where you find yourself today, I am saying God is guaranteeing peace for you. Hallelujah. And he said, my peace, I live with you. There is something is living with us. There is something has guaranteed us. There is something has trusted he wants to give to us. And that is his peace. That peace that can maneuver. He can stay. He can survive in the midst of storm. That peace that can be so calm. I mean, you can be so calm and yet there is trouble. When men are agitated, you still have peace. Sometimes it is difficult for people to comprehend. How can you still be so calm? How can you be in the midst of this trouble? And you can still be smiling. You can still be happy. How is that possible? Jesus left the peace with you. Do you understand that? He promised you the kind of peace that the world cannot give. Now, the world can give you. The other day somebody was talking to me and was saying, what do you think, David? You're talking about these scriptures. You're talking about these passages. But what about the trouble that other people are facing? What about the trouble as well? One thing you've got to understand is this. If Jesus guarantees you something from the world, it's going to work. It's not just like counseling. It's not just psychological counseling. It's not what people try to do. Listen to what he's saying. The peace is not the type that the world gives. I have the kind of peace that the world doesn't have. In other words, even if you try to make peace on your own, it still cannot survive stormy situations. But in its own condition, even if you are there, the storm is there, the wave is there, the wind is blowing, but he leaves the peace with you. And you have able to come to the, and don't forget what he said, perfect peace have this whose mind is stayed on the Lord. By implication, don't let the situation you are turn your heart away from the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't let the condition you find yourself turn your mind away from the Lord. He said, perfect peace of this. Whose mind, your thought, your protection, your walk, your state of reasoning, your imagination is stayed on the Lord and your trust is on him. His peace is guaranteed. He said, my peace I live with you. My peace I give unto you. He doesn't only live with us, he is giving it. Now there's a place to receive anything that is given. I want you to understand that. If I give you a present and you don't accept it, it can't work for you. He said, I peace I live with you. That means the peace of God is in this world. And he said, my peace I give unto you. That means you have to receive it. You must come to the Lord believing the Lord has given me his peace. He's going to walk in your life. No matter what happened, there is a peace that the Lord has left behind. There's the kind of peace he has given to each and every one of us. That no matter the trouble, you are still going to be level-headed. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? So don't get confused all the time. Get your mind back onto the Lord. Get your trust onto the Lord. No, it's not about psychological thing. It's not about the promise that anybody gives. It's not something that somebody says... Don't you forget this. That men can promise you some situations, promise you some things, but at the end they will fail. But if God promises you a thing, he will bring it to pass. He said, I live with you my peace. I have my own peace. The time that I can overcome storm, I'm leaving it behind. Not only that, I'm giving it to you. And I'm also trying to make you understand when you receive this peace from the Lord, it not only works for you, it's going to work for your families. 
Hallelujah. Are you with me? So here we find the Lord is saying, you're going to prosper in your body, you're going to prosper in your soul, you're going to enjoy every earthly thing and heavenly good, for the meaning of that word actually means you're going to be at peace. Hallelujah. Amen. You're going to be at peace. You're going to be in prosperity. You're going to be in quietness. You're going to be a place of rest. He said, I leave it with you. Oh, look at what he said again in the book of Mighty. He said, you that labor and are heavy laden, come unto me. I will give you what? Rest. I will give you rest. He it has a way of providing rest for us. Only if we can come to him. He has a way of providing rest for us. If only we can trust him. He has a way of providing that rest. If only our mind can stay on him. Praise the living God. You understand what I'm talking about? We have to have this conviction within us. That Lord said he's leaving his peace behind for us. He didn't take it away with him to heaven. I'm talking about the peace that made him to be sleeping and yell that he's storm in the sea. Think about that. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, Jesus was walking in all situations, knowing everything that was going to happen even before it happens. I said that yesterday when I was teaching. How many of you want to agree with me that Jesus knew that Lazarus was going to die for three days? They went to call him and he told them, don't bother me. I'm coming. Can you imagine that? Now, he was not agitated. He was not, you know, moved instantly. He was not panicking. He, you know, it means he was still very calm. Already they told him the man is dead. But he was still very calm. There is peace that is working in his life. He has an assurance that Lazarus will rise again. He believed by the reason of who he is. What he knows his father that he can do. He knew Lazarus will rise again. So for three good days, he stayed behind. It was the peace that kept him. The peace that comes the assurance that God himself is the God of peace. Hallelujah. Are you there with me? My peace I give unto you. It's a tranquility of soul. Such uninterrupted happiness of mind. Such everlasting friendship with God. As I enjoy, I'm going to give that to you. Hallelujah. And I pray may you all enjoy the same peace in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, also blessedness. I am leaving behind for you. It is my last wish. It's my last hope. It's my dying legacy. Think about that. Somebody wants to give up. Remember, this is when he was going to the cross. He's about going to the cross. And he said, I'm going to leave my peace with you. So it's like a wish. It's a desire. It's like writing a will. It's like making the last statement. A dying man making the last pronouncement. It's like what Jacob did for his children. Gather all the children because he's about to die. And wants to pray for them. He wants to bless them. Say, let me bless you. When Moses was to leave, he brought all the people. Let me bless you. So when Jesus wants to leave, say, this is my blessing for you. My peace. I live with you. Can you get that? This is the last word for from a dying man, if you use the word. This is the last word for the man that's about to depart. This is a gift he's leaving behind. I have a, the kind of peace that the world cannot give. He's with me. I walk with it. That's why in every situation he's not agitated. He's not disturbed. He has assurance that his father will keep him. He said it to you, I'm not alone. My father is with me. Hallelujah. You got to have the understanding that no matter where you find yourself, you are not alone. Jesus is with you. Praise the living God. So he's living here. His last words, his last legacy, his last promise, you know, his last desire. I mean, his thought for you is that you live in peace. And if he guarantees you that, you're surely going to live in peace. Amen? Because this is his prayer. This is his last word for you. This is his own last statement. This is his own last desire for everything else. I want to go, but I'm leaving something behind. In the midst of this war, you are going to have peace. In the midst of your family, you are going to have peace. In the midst of your country, you are going to have peace. I'm leaving this with you. That is what he left behind for us. He said, I'm giving it to you. And if he could give us his peace, we will receive it. We will leave it out. So receive the peace of God in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, not as the world give it. So the world can give peace. But the world peace cannot sustain you in the times of trouble. Hallelujah. Amen. They are empty wishes. They are just human philosophy. You know, the world can just make some compliments and try to give you some promises that they cannot fulfill. 
But when it comes to God, it's well this year and amen. Hallelujah. Let not your heart be troubled, he said. Don't draw back because of problems. Don't feel yourselves because of the things you see. Stay on with your mind. Give your trust unto me. Believe what I said. That I'm going to leave my peace behind. I'm going to give you my kind of peace. Praise the living God. I want you to gather these people. Turn with me to Philippians 4. Verse number 6. Philippians 4 verse number 6. You may have problems. It could be your marriage. It could be your business. I'm pronouncing today. Peace is coming to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Is a peace that this world cannot give. You're going to have it. Everything is going to be settled. Even as Jesus made that statement to that trouble, be quiet. I pronounce today that all the storms in your life be quiet. Hallelujah. Philippians 4, verse number 6. If you can take for the translation, okay, but we can read this. Be careful for nothing. Let's read it from maybe. NIV or New Living Translation, whichever one you have. Do not be anxious about anything. Hallelujah. Now you're saying, David, you mean <laughs> with this kind of trouble I'm seeing, I shouldn't be anxious? I shouldn't be worried? The same thing. Jesus was on the boat. There was stop, but he wasn't anxious. Why was he not anxious? Why was he not worried? Because he has the kind of peace that the world cannot give. And he said, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication and petition with thanksgiving, present your request unto what? Unto God. Now go to verse 7. And the peace of God, <laughs> which transcend all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. The peace of God. Don't forget, the world has its own peace. We have United Nations to make peace among nations. Am I correct? Yes. We have peace corps. We have all manner of peace, 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 things going on just to make peace around the world. But there's another kind of peace that comes from God. He said, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding. In other words, no circumstance can overcome no circumstance can subdue no circumstance can challenge the peace of God that he wants to live with you he said this peace passes all it kind of overcomes it kind of overshadows any other peace or trouble that you seem to be facing you he said this peace he gives to you this is from God not the peace from the world not the peace from your relation not the peace from your husband or your wife is the peace of God it is only from God. Jesus said, this is the kind of peace that I'm talking about. I had this peace and it is that peace that sustained me when the storm was on. I could still sleep and the storm is on. The boat was going to capsize. I could still sleep because there is this peace of God that I had in my heart. And this peace passed all understanding. That means no trouble can overcome this peace. Once you have it, you are stable. In every situation you find yourself, you are stable. Though there might be trouble all around you, you are still very confident that nothing can swallow you. Because the peace we're talking about is only from God. Only God originated this peace. That is how God pays. God is never troubled over anything. Jesus was never troubled over anything. I just gave you a simple illustration. Even with the storm, he could see sleep. Even with the fire that Lazarus is dead, he could see hold on for three good days. He was not anxious. He was not worried. He was not agitated. Think about that. And yet it was his responsibility to raise Lazarus. I am trying to say, whatever thing is dead in your life, there's going to be life in it again. Restoration is coming back to it. Life is coming back to it. Just as Lazarus was raised from the grave, your life shall come back to life. In the name of Jesus. But he said, don't be anxious. If there is anything you want to do, just take this thing and give it to God. He said, if in every situation, let your prayer or your request be made known unto God. It's not about anxiety. 
and that God is going to give you this space. We transcend all understanding. And he said, this place with God. You know what it means to God? You see the security guard, they just passed around this place. I saw two of them this morning. I said, what are you doing? He said, we're walking around the place. With their guns, they're walking around the place. Security man. God said he's going to guard your heart. That means he's going to fence your heart. That nothing outside will come into trouble this peace. You, you got to what I'm talking about. There's a protection. Once he gives you that peace, he sets his garrison. He guards your heart. That nothing, you know, even when people try to talk fear into your life, it will not come into your heart. When you're talking disappointment, it will not come into your heart. Because the peace of God is protected. The peace of God is guarded. So no trouble around you can shake you, can wave you, can make you to be intimidated. I want to say to somebody, your tears are over. Your cries are over. Your pains are over. In the name of Jesus Christ. He says it's going to guard your heart. As a city is fenced around, no reptiles are coming in. The protection that was seemingly not in Eden, that makes the serpent to come and deceive Eve, that is not going to come in anymore. There's a protection around this young garden. It's fenced around by the security of God. And the peace of God, we pass it all understanding. We guard your heart. The peace of God is going to protect you so that your thoughts are not confused. Your mind is not confused. You are not anxious over anything because you know all things work together for good. God peace is guaranteed. God peace is coming to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the living God. Have you seen a situation? Of course, we do know we travel all over the place. You see military checkpoints. What are they doing there? They are guarding the environment against negative elements, against foreign invasion. That's what we're talking about. It's like a garrison of soldiers. The peace of God is like a military garrison that is taking charge of your mind. That because of that peace, nothing negative is going to come into your heart. Your thoughts are going to be pure. Your mind is going to be pure. Your imagination is going to be stable. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to think about it because it's very important. It's very crucial you understand what I'm talking about. So true faith in God brings assurance and peace to the soul in all circumstances of prosperity or even adversity. You are not troubled by anything that similarly is going on around you. You don't know how this is going to happen. You don't know which way. But the only thing God told you is this. Keep your mind in me. Trust me. And I'm going to release the peace that passes all, all understanding. Go to verse 8. Let me read something before I take my last scripture here. He says, Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, do what? Think on such things. Hallelujah. That means, you know why I ask you to think of this? This is where your heart is supposed to be all the time. He doesn't want you to think anything that is of anxiety. Oh, how is my life going to end? How will my children survive? How is this? How is that? Not an anxiety. Think about things that are pure. Think about the love of God. Think about the goodness of God. And he said, I'm going to release my peace unto you. And the peace will garrison your heart. Hallelujah. How many of you understand that one thing about Jesus' death is that he really intends to guide your mind? By his stripe, the Bible says you are healed. How many of you remember that? Praise the living God. The water from inside washed you, which is the water of washing by the world. But have you imagined why the tongue was upon his head? The tongue was a mind of protection to protect your mind. So he delivered your mind from negative thinking. That is why the tongue was upon his head. He suffered in his body that you might be healed. He suffered in his mind that you might have his mind. So let his mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. That is why the tongue was upon his head. It's to bind your mind. 
so that you cannot have negative thought come into your heart negative thought imaginations he wants you to think things that are lovely things that are pure things that are true things that are excellent things that are praiseworthy he said put your mind on those things praise the living god and so when that happens he protects your mind by the edge, I mean those stones that pierce his side, it was protecting your mind from negative thought, negative invention. It was a wall that was erected around your mind so that you don't have negative thought, even about your brother, about your sister, about your wife, about your neighbor. He wants your mind protected. He said, you don't be anxious over anything. He's going to give you this peace that garrison in your heart, this peace that protects your heart. Praise the living God. Are you still with me? I want you to follow because it's very, very, very crucial for me this morning. I need you to understand that. That all your agitation amounts to nothing. Because Jesus is definitely going to solve the problem. There is solution for that which you are agitated about. But he's telling you this morning, let your heart be at rest. Just like you rebuke this storm. I'm saying this morning, every storm in your life is rebuked in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now you turn with me to Psalm 112. I'm going to read from verse 4. This is how you walk into this peace. Or that are the right thinking. Or that are keeping your mind at rest. This is how you intend to walk. But I think we can read all of this passage. Let's go on to read from verse number 1. Let's read from verse number 1. It's an interesting psalm that you need to understand. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord that delighted greatly in his commandments. Hallelujah. I want you to follow what David is trying to talk about here. This is very prophetic and I believe somebody is going to receive a water, I mean this day, that will change your life, that will challenge your spirit, that will bring you to that place of absolute rest and comfort, that in the midst of it, listen to me, I'm trying to say something. Even if there is no food in your house, you're going to have peace and you don't know why you're having that peace. The thought of what my children eat tomorrow will not be there because there's going to be supply. You will not understand how the supply will come. And I'm speaking to somebody. The challenge in your home is being resolved right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you're finding a solution to that problem. And it's going to come by God himself. Least expected of you. It's not what you think about. It's not what you're dreaming about. But I'm seeing a solution to that problem right now. And then verse 2 said, His seed of the man that fears the Lord and keep his commandment. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Hallelujah. I'm prophesying to somebody this morning. Your seed shall be mighty upon the earth. And the generation of the upright shall be a blessed people. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at verse number 3. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. His righteousness endureth forever. Praise the God. Now, you see, some, there is something we don't understand. We often talk about generational causes, but we don't know about generational blessings. God spoke to Abraham. In thee shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Your seed shall be mighty on the earth. He left Abraham and spoke to Isaac the same thing. From Isaac he spoke to Jacob. Same thing. And so when people begin to pray and say the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. That means a three generational blessing that flow from Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And you can connect to that. Is anybody understand what I'm talking about? I'm talking of three generational blessing from Abraham to Isaac, from Isaac to Jacob. The same thing God said to them. And that's why you see, there are some things God may be speaking now that you will not experience, but your seed will experience them. Unto the upright arises light in darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and what? Righteous. I want you to know this. Unto the upright, there arises light where? In the darkness. So you say we God, you trust in God. In the midst of darkness upon the earth, there is going to be light coming through for you. Hallelujah. Verse 5 says, A good man showeth favor and lendeth. 
He will guide his affairs with what? Discretion. Take it from NIV, let me see. Just this verse. God will come to him who is generous and lends freely who conduct his affairs with what? Justice. I want you to know this thing. God will come to him. So one of the ways you invite God into your house is not just prayers. But when you are what? Generous. And you do what? You learn freely. God will come to him. Did you notice that? In other words, one of the ways you keep God out of your environment is to be stingy. One of the ways, you know, you see, the Bible says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth who went about doing good. Do you understand that? And the people said, good master. Remember when they called him, he said, good master. He asked them the question. Why collect him a good master? Only God is good. You know what he's trying to say there? You never believe I'm God. But yet your Bible tells you only God is good. Now you're calling me good master. That means I'm God. But you don't believe I'm God. But that's exactly who I am. And the Bible says God will come to such people. Can you get that? Who learns what? Generously and freely and conducts your affairs with what? With justice. God will come to them. Hallelujah. Look at the next thing, verse number six. Stay continue with NIV, number six. Praise the Lord. Surely he will never be shaken. Such ones, a righteous man will be remembered forever. Praise the God. A righteous man will do what? Will be remembered forever. Think about that. I was trying to share something with you a few time ago. But again, I think I will have time to talk about it. What legacy do you think you have or you want to leave behind as a human being? You see, Absalom saw that he has to leave something behind. He had nothing for a memorial. He had no child. What did he do? He set up a pillar and called it Absalom. Not everybody wants to leave this world without something to be remembered for. Are you listening to me? Come on. Are you following what I'm talking about? If you can't live your life by not imagining that you have to leave something behind. What would people truly remember you for? Absalom said, I can't live this life and just go like that. No, 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 no. I have no child to continue my legacy. No, no. So what am I going to do? He set up a pillar. Can you imagine that? I named the pillar what? Absalom. At least when people see the pillar, they remember Absalom. The people that are generous, they will always be remembered. One of the ways by you can put your name, an indelible name upon life of people, upon creation, is to be a generous person. The man that gives freely, the man that learns freely, the man that meets the needs of people. Somebody said, but you see, David, I don't have what to give. You have. You have at least you have a smile. At least you can come to somebody and say, brother, what is going on? You can pray with somebody. You can counsel with somebody. You can make inquiry. If somebody is not around, if somebody is not feeling fell, I mean too well, you can definitely go there. Do you know what it means to touch somebody? How? You see, Jesus can speak words and heal people. Why do you think he will lay hands on people? Why do you think we touch somebody? I mean, there is a place of compassion. A torch is a mighty world that speaks of healing to people's life. That speaks of love to people's life. When you hug people, you're trying to show them love. And they begin to feel related. They begin to feel accepted. They begin to feel beloved. When you touch people, you don't know what you're transmitting. You're transmitting life. Praise the living God. Is anybody understanding me? He says, surely he will never be shaken. And a righteous man will be remembered for what? forever. Think about that. There is a place to live. I'm talking about still those who have the peace of God. Because you see when you have this peace, you're also going to be distributing this peace. You're going to make people to see that you truly live with the peace of God. All around you, something will be coming out of you that demonstrates peace. When you step into a home, have you noticed that sometimes some people, when they step into a certain environment, the environment changes. How many of you understand that? Because their face is so heavy. There's never a smile on their face. And they transmit that into the atmosphere. And when you enter into that place, the next thing that happens to you, your countenance changes because that's what is going on there. But God is telling you this morning, there is peace on your inside. And that peace will be shown on the outside. It will be reflected from your face. When people see you, they will see peace walking. And you transmit peace. They will enjoy the peace around you. That is why you are going to be called 
blessed are what? The peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Hallelujah. Let's take verse number seven very quickly. Seven says, He will have no fear of bad news. Come on. Hallelujah. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. No fear of bad news. Even if the economy is failing, they have nothing to do with you because your trust is in the Lord. Your trust is in the Father. Praise the living God. He will have no fear of bad news. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Verse number 8. And he said, his heart is secured. Don't forget what I told you. Your heart will be guarded. Your heart is guarded. Wrong thoughts are not coming in. His heart is secured. He will have no fear. In the end, he will look in triumph on his enemies. Can I hear an amen? amen. Hallelujah. Verse number 9. And he said, He has scattered abroad his gift to the poor. His righteousness does what? Endures forever. Praise the living God. And then his horn will be lifted high in honor. You know what horn means? Speaks of power. Speaks of authority. Speaks of dominion. Will be lifted up. Your authority will be extended. Will be ascending. Will be lifted up. Because you know what? You trust in the Lord. Your faithfulness, your commitment is unto the Lord. You lend to people. You assist those who are done through them. Your trust is in the Lord. I repeat that. Your trust is in the Lord. Your mind is on the Lord. And don't forget where we're coming from. In Isaiah 26 and verse number 3. Perfect peace have days. Whose mind is on the Lord? Who trust is on God? Perfect peace have those people. And the Bible says your horn shall be lifted. That means the dominion that God has given to you shall certainly be elevated. You're going to rule in the midst of your enemy. You're going to rule right here on the earth. Everything you seem to be missing, I pray for restoration. Everything you seem to be missing right now, I pray for restoration. But especially the peace of God, which no man can give, which the world cannot give, which no brother or sister can give. That peace, let it come to your mind, let it come to your heart in the name of Jesus Christ.